Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Now, to start off this video, let's roll the clock back to 2016. BMW was very eager to introduce a series of bikes that would help get newer, younger riders into the sport and into their own brand. What BMW decided to do was partner with Indian motorcycle manufacturing giant TVS, and they introduced this 310 series of bikes, including the G310R and the G310GS. These bikes have been built in India, but designed and developed in Germany, and the whole time under BMW's very watchful eye in terms of quality control and things like that. In the seven or eight years since then, these 310 models have been a major success for BMW, allowing them to bring in younger riders, newer riders, riders who can't afford to spend 10, 15, 20, $30,000 on a motorcycle. They've allowed BMW to bring those types of riders into their brand, into the sport, with the hopes that of course, they're gonna stay with the BMW brand and maybe upgrade to a more expensive model later on. Now, just how affordable is a bike like this? Well, this particular model here that I'm testing, and we'll talk about more of this in the review as we go, this is 4,999 plus destination and fees and things like that. That's pretty affordable for a brand new motorcycle with a three year warranty. I've seen this bike advertised at dealerships in California for around $100 a month using BMW's special balloon financing program that they call Easy Ride. Now we won't go into the details of that here, but the fact that you can get a brand new motorcycle like this for around $100 a month is pretty astonishing. So today we'll go in depth and we'll examine the G310R and see just how much fun you can have or maybe how much fuel you can save on your commute for around $5,000 or around $100 a month. So with that, let's get riding. Sound check. All right, seat height and riding position on the G310R. So we've got a 31 inch or 790 millimeter seat height, which is pretty approachable for shorter riders and newer riders. It's not as low as you might get on like a super low, like entry level cruiser, like a Rebel 300 or 500, something like that. But it's not bad for a bike like this. Now let me show you the riding position. Now keep in mind, I'm five foot 10, 1.78 meter, 32 inch leg and seam. I weigh about 200 pounds, about 90 kilograms. So I'm a good size American guy, right? So <clears throat> here's the position I'm in when I'm riding. There's, this would be straight upright, and this is the position of the 310. So there's not, much, there's not much forward lean. What I do notice is for my legs, I feel like my legs are a bit folded up and my knees are a bit high. So the pegs feel kind of high, the seat feels kind of low. I feel a bit cramped in this area, but it's not terrible. Okay, and if you're shorter, it's gonna be really good. In terms of reach to the ground, the ground feels very close. Like it's very easy to reach the ground and the bike feels light and just very easy to deal with. There's a riding position again. So on longer rides, the leg room, kind of the bend in my knee does get to me for a longer ride. But in terms of the lean, there's, there's not much lean. So I find it comfortable in that regard. So anyway, there you go. All right, in today's video, I'm using from top to bottom the Arai Contour X. This is, I think, their newest helmet. Good venting, lightweight, super comfortable interior, and Arai's fit me like no other helmet. I've probably owned 40 different helmets in my life. I probably own about 15 right now, and Arai's, just for whatever reason, they fit my head the best. Love that helmet. Um, the jacket is a Revit Echelon, or Echelon. I, I don't know why I can never say that right, but it's one of their newest jackets. This is more of an adventure kit. I'm also wearing the Echelon pants. They're a lightweight, uh, well-vented Gore-Tex uh, winter set of riding gear, or all-season riding gear. Uh, good venting, good fit. They, they don't look like a space suit. Um, super comfortable. You can layer underneath them really well. CE level two armor, really, really love this kit and I'm doing a long-term review of this, so I'm using it as much as I can. The boots, I'm using uh, Alpenstar's SMX uh, V2 ventilated street boots. And then for gloves today, I'm using the Revit Sand 4 H2O. These are some of my favorite uh, sort of cool to cold weather gloves and they have a Hydrotex uh, waterproof liner. 
So yeah, there's my gear for today. Let me know if you have any questions and you can check all this out in the links below. All right, let's take a tour and talk about the specs and features of the little engine that could, the mighty little red BMW G310R. So just a quick note that for 2021, the bike did get some updates. It got a Euro 5 emissions compliant engine. It got a ride-by-wire throttle. It got this low RPM assist feature to help with some issues that people were having with stalling at low RPMs. It got a slipper clutch and it got this uh, standard LED headlight right here. So keep that in mind if you're shopping for a used one that the 2021s and later are probably the ones you wanna get. The pricing. $4,999, but there's a $600 destination fee. So realistically, uh, $5,600 plus tax, title, license, and things like that. So, you know, in my part of the world here in California, USA, I'm guessing you're looking at, you know, $6,500 or something like that once all is said and done. But that's going to vary depending on where you live and your dealership. This motorcycle weighs 362 pounds or 164 kilograms, which is light uh there are dual sport motorcycles uh that weigh more than this so nice to see that light weight let's talk about the fuel here so 2.9 gallons or 11 liters it sounds small but keep in mind you're getting you know 60 miles a gallon i'll put the uh, conversion here below for metric um, so your tank range is still you know, maybe 150 miles or so, depending on kind of how fast you're riding. Could be more, could be less. Seat height, we've already looked at that, 31 inches or 790 millimeters. Let's talk about the engine just briefly. So this is a 313 cc, uh, four stroke, you know, liquid cooled, single cylinder, four valve engine. The little engine that could, like I like to call it. Uh, it's rated for 34 horsepower or 25 kilowatts at 9,250 RPM. And torque is not so much. It's only 20 foot pounds of torque or 28 Newton meters coming in way up at 7,500 RPM. So you notice, you know, based on the specs and based on riding it, which you'll see, you really have to kind of rev this engine out if you want to get moving. Uh, let's take a little tour, talk about some of the features. So wheels and tires, you're looking at 17 inch front and back uh, wheels and tires. You've got this red painted on this version, which look pretty cool in my opinion. Let's start our tour here uh, <coughs> up at the front. So we've got the front fender. The gold forks and the upside down forks, it does give more of a premium look and feel to the bike, so I appreciate that. The LED headlight, the tiny, the little cover behind the instrument panel here, LED turn signals, which is nice to have. The bike comes with like this, uh, I don't wanna, it's not a skid plate, it's like a cowling or a little plastic cover down here just to kind of dress up the bottom of the engine. You've got the oil filter here, so maintenance should be pretty easy. Brake pedal, foot pegs, oil filler. You can see the tubular frame and it does look like it, have a, it has a detachable subframe exhaust down here, which is a little bit larger than you'd like to see, but keep in mind they have emissions requirements, they have sound requirements, right? Um, so you've got those things to keep in mind. The seat, you know, you don't have a very big passenger seat. You do have some grab handles and you have some sort of a little like area where you guys guess could hook a bungee cord or something like that. But it's not gonna be the greatest bike if you like to carry a lot of stuff. Rear lighting, license plate. Rear brake, which is kind of this gold uh, looking thing. So that's cool. Coming around, you can see, of course, we've got our chain drive here. We've got our shock, the preload. It has like a preload collar here, uh, which you can adjust. It has steps on it. Um, side stand, shifter, nothing too incredible to see here. Let's look at the brakes. So you do have a pretty good size front rotor. It is a single sided disc. It's not dual disc like you get on a heavier, more expensive bike. And you have these bi brake calipers, which is Brembo's Indian subsidiary. And you know, they're okay. They're, they're fine, right? And really, uh, it's all about context, right? Like if you compare these brakes, which are now considered budget brakes to even a a nice pair of brakes 10 or 20 years ago, these would probably be better. So <laughs> everything gets better over time as technology improves. Fuel tank here, jumping up to look at the controls. 
typical good quality BMW mirrors. Switch gear is a little plasticky, but it's not bad. I like to see the adjustable levers for clutch and brake on a bike that costs only $5,000. That's good. The tubular handlebar, which I'm a fan of because it's easier to mount like a phone mount or if you want to raise the handlebars a little bit or even change the out the bend, you know, it's easier to do that when you have a tubular bar. Um, firing up the dash here, you've got some indicator lights on the sides like signals, low fuel, neutral, ice warning, ABS and indicators, the normal stuff. The LCD, sorry about the glare, it's just hard to film these dashboards. You've got a, um, you can scroll through with this button to different things. So you've got trip, computers, range. See, I'm getting 62 miles a gallon. I'm riding it pretty hard. Um, average speed, date, odometer. Yeah, this bike, it doesn't have any miles on it. You've got a fuel gauge, you've got a tachometer, a speedometer, gear indicator, and a clock. And that's, you know, that's really about it for the dash. Keep it simple, you know. All right, everybody. Let's go for a ride on the G310R. Now, I spent quite a bit of time on the G310GS. So the G310R is somewhat familiar in terms of the engine, but it definitely has a different feel, obviously, than the GS because of the sporty riding position and just a different character of the bike. My impressions when I jump on board the G310R um, it doesn't feel like the BMWs I'm used to. You can definitely tell that, you know, this is made with different components in a different factory with a different type of assembly. But that being said, it doesn't feel overly cheap or budget. And it feels about like I would expect, you know, a five or $6,000 motorcycle to feel. <coughs> the switches are a little plasticky. Um, the dash is a little small and you've got the LCD. You're not getting like a color TFT obviously at this price point or anything But actually, you know the red paints pretty sporty the finish is pretty good for this price point and overall I'm pretty impressed for this amount of money. So when we start up the bike It takes a few cranks to start. I don't know why that that's how these engines kind of are in my experience and you know, it's a single cylinder engine, right? So the exhaust note is, you know, it actually sounds a little bit sporty for being a small single cylinder. It's not bad. Uh, there's not much vibration to speak of, like when the bike's idling. The, the vibration sets in above about 7,000 RPM, which will kind of show on the highway. When we set off on the bike, I mean, the clutch is super easy to use. The motorcycle feels very light very low to the ground because it is in fact light and low to the ground so i think this will be very friendly for more beginner riders and even for like a more experienced rider this could make a really kind of inexpensive commuter bike right because if you finance it with that special program for like 100 bucks a month i mean you know i mean my truck costs more than 100 dollars to fill up with diesel so or one the gas tank so i mean it becomes pretty attractive at that point. When you set off on the G310, you know, the engine doesn't have a lot of torque. So if you want to accelerate more quickly, you've got to keep the engine spinning, you know, above 6,000 RPM. But that being said, it's perfectly adequate. And it pulls up to 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour with no problem at all. There's 65 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. You really don't get very too much buzz until you get about 75 or 80 miles an hour. So it's like that seven or 8,000 RPM level where you, you start to feel a little buzziness from the engine and that's to be expected. I mean, it's a small single cylinder engine, but it's not, it's not such a deal breaker or a problem that I would say, you know, don't get the bike. And even if you have to ride on the highway at 70 miles an hour, the bike has plenty of power to do this. And it doesn't feel overly stressed or overly strained and it feels perfectly stable and comfortable to do that. So at 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour, I'm exactly at 6,000 RPM. 
The bike redlines at 10,000 RPM, so keep that in mind. BMW claims a top speed of around 90 miles an hour, and I, I believe that. All right, let me kind of give you a sense of the full acceleration here. There's 60, 65, 70. So, you know, the acceleration, uh, you know, you could probably get out dragged or out, out accelerated by a minivan, you know, like a Honda Odyssey, probably you could, but it's not that slow. I mean, it's adequate. You can keep up with traffic and accelerate at an adequate level, you know, but it's not, it's not thrilling. It's not designed to be thrilling or super fast. And then roll on power is okay. It's better if you downshift, you know, and use all your RPM. In terms of brakes, like the brakes are a little, they feel a little spongy, but again, we're talking about a budget motorcycle. They're adequate for the job. You're not going to be touring two up on this bike with a full load of luggage across the country at 100 miles an hour and then having to stop, right? I mean, the brakes are okay. They're fine, right? And you've got ABS, so you can stop quickly and securely. The suspension on the bike is decent, I think, for the price point. You really only have that rear preload adjustment to compensate for uh, your weight or whatever. But you don't have any other adjustments, and you don't really need them. You know, the bike's fine. Um, it's a budget suspension, of course. But it's perfectly fine for commuting, for some light sport riding, and whatever you really need to do with the bike, realistically. So that part's fine. You know, being a naked sport bike, you don't have any wind protection here. It's it's cold this morning. It's in the 40s uh, Fahrenheit. So, you know, I forgot my neck. Uh, what do you call it? You know, uh, my, my scarf or whatever for my neck. So my neck's cold. So keep in mind, you don't have any wind protection. You know, if you want that, maybe look at getting the, G the GS. And you can get a windshield on there. In terms of comfort, you know, I I'm okay on this bike for about... Uh, around two hours or so at my height five foot ten or 1.78 meter with a 32 inch inseam I'm a little bit cramped you know I don't have a lot of leg room I'm a little bit folded up on the bike but it's not terrible the little bit of forward lean doesn't bother me I think it's the leg room with my knees kind of up high here that would get to me on a longer ride let's get a little sporty here with the g310r it's a cold kind of wet morning so i got to be a little careful here i don't want to have any low sides especially while i'm filming a video that wouldn't make me look very professional would it always respect cold tires and cold pavement just be very respectful of that you only have so much traction to give you know but here's the thing about the g310r this is my favorite thing to do on this bike because it's so light and so nimble and so just tossable, right? It's just, it's really a lot of fun. And the tighter the road, the better because, you know, you don't have a lot of power, but on a road like this, you're not limited by power. You're limited by your, your ability as a rider to get through the corners, right? And to maintain your momentum. And that's the challenge. It's like in the car world, why are Miata so good, right? It's because it's about keeping up your momentum and really flying through the corners, you know? And this bike is really a great analogy for that. And you can keep up with riders on much, much more expensive, more powerful bikes because 100 plus horsepower doesn't mean a damn thing on a road like this. You're not using it, you know, you're using the handling of the bike. And you can still really get moving on this little thing. I mean, 40 horsepower is nothing to laugh about. And 
And the thing is, you're going to be the one laughing all the way to the bank because you only spent 6,000 bucks or 100 bucks a month to have this much fun when all the guys on their expensive machinery are worried about scratching it or whatever or they don't know how to ride properly, you know what I mean? I'm a big believer in being a, being a good rider, taking riding courses, developing yourself as a rider. Don't worry about the damn bike and how fancy your bike is. That doesn't mean crap. It really doesn't. And I'm a pretty experienced rider and man, I have a ton of fun throwing this little bike around. And I can use, the reason it's so fun is that I can use 100% of the power that this bike has every time I jump on it. And that's engaging, that's fun, that's entertaining. So I really, really do appreciate that. Now don't get me wrong, I appreciate expensive motorcycles and all the technology and things like that, but I also appreciate a basic, affordable, fun, sporty motorcycle like this G310R. So here's what I want you to do. If you're more of a beginning rider, get yourself a bike like this and all of those fancy sport bike guys or adventure guys or whatever can turn up their noses that you bought a budget bike, a 300, and then get some rider training, go to some courses, uh, become a really good rider, and then pass them on your favorite twisty road and see who's laughing at that point because it's all about the rider and it's not about the bike. But that being said, this is still a really cool bike and I wouldn't mind having one myself. There is one downside that every time I ride the 310 that it does kind of bug me a little bit and that's the transmission and I normally don't have this complaint about modern motorcycles because transmissions have gotten so good so my complaint on this is that the transmission feels kind of rough and notchy to shift it, it doesn't have the slick shifting feel of kind of what I've become used to with most motorcycles and especially Japanese motorcycles um, so you kind of have to be a little more intentional with your foot like you just really have to push it into gear a little bit harder than you would on a lot of its competition and it just doesn't feel super refined because of that you know and no I'm not expecting like a quick shifter or anything at this price level but the transmission just feels kind of notchy. Now it does get better when the bike is fully warmed up. It's a little bit worse when the oil's cold, right? Because you're pushing those gears through cold oil. It hasn't uh, warmed up to full temperature, but even when the bike's fully warmed up like it is now, uh, it still feels, you know, just notchy. And it's not a deal breaker, but it's something that I want you to be aware of if you're considering buying this bike. So I know it's hard to get test rides, but try to ride some of the competition and compare the transmissions because I think you'll find this is one of the rougher ones. Whee! Power, power, power. trail break right so what about maintaining this bike if you purchase one uh so i did a little research i pulled up the owner's manual online and read through it and looked at the maintenance schedule so paul uh, apologies for looking at my phone here to have to reference this so there's a run in service at 500 miles or about 900 kilometers so they're going to change your oil do a few run-in checks and things like that uh then Minor services, oil changes are 6,000 miles or every 10,000 kilometers. Major services, which would be like the valve clearance, the air filter, the spark plugs, do the oil again. That's gonna be every 12,000 miles or 20,000 kilometers. Now, in terms of working on the motorcycle yourself, yes, you absolutely can. You can see the oil filter right there. It's gonna be easy to do oil changes. Um, if you wanna do things like valve adjustments or air filter uh, changes, things like that, that's really going to just depend on your comfort level working on a motorcycle. How advanced are you? What kind of tools do you have? And are you willing to really tear into the bike? Um, it is true that modern motorcycles and modern vehicles, if you want to do computer diagnostics and things like that, you would need special tools. A lot of people end up going to the dealer. But if you want to do your own maintenance, there's certainly nothing stopping you on the G310. 
All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed going on the ride with me. I'm not gonna do my usual pro and con segment because we've kind of already covered all that during the review at, at this point. Um, instead, let's talk about the competition. So if you're looking at a G310R, what else would you be looking at? Well, to be really honest, there's a lot of really, really good competition in the sort of entry level sporty motorcycle segment. What are some ways that the BMW stands out? Well, honestly, number one is the brand, right? And vanity is a thing and I don't have judgment about that. Look, it's fine if that's a thing for you. So you're able to get a BMW badge here for 5,000 bucks and that's pretty compelling. The other thing about BMWs is that the dealerships, in my experience, at least here in the USA, the dealers I've worked with, have been super friendly, approachable, kind of a community uh, feel. The service centers have really talented uh, techs working there. Is stuff expensive? Yeah, but it seems to be a high level service. The other thing you get with BMW is the special financing programs like their Easy Ride Balloon Financing, which allows you to get into something like this with a low down payment around maybe 100 bucks a month, 120 bucks a month. And also, of course, the three year warranty, which um, you know, you get that with Royal Enfield, but I can't think of any others. It's really just BMW and Royal Enfield that I can think of that give you the three years. So there are advantages there. Now, what other motorcycles should you be looking at? Well, there's quite a lot. So you have bikes like Yamaha's MT-03 or the R3. You've got the Honda CB300R or the CBR300R. Kawasaki's Ninja 400 or the Z400. Uh, you've got the KTM Duke 390, and I could go on and on, but there's a lot of good competitors in this segment. And you should really take a hard, hard look at those in terms of what they're offering uh, for the money, in terms of does it fit your budget, does it fit your brand preference, what dealerships do you like, do you prefer a Japanese bike, do you want a European bike, does that matter to you? There's a lot of things to consider, and all the bikes I mentioned are really good. There, there really aren't any, any, well, there's very few bad motorcycles in this segment. Let me just put it that way. Final thoughts on BMW's G310R. This is a BMW motorcycle built in India, yes, but under BMW supervision and with their design and development. That costs under $5,000, excluding destination taxes and fees and all that. Comes with a three-year warranty, BMW's reputation for quality. It's sporty, it's fun to ride, it's uh, good looking, it's well finished. There's not too many bad things that I have to say about it. I have talked about a few things. You know, the riding position could be a little cramped if you're taller like me. The engine can be buzzy above 75 miles an hour. It's not gonna win many drag races. The transmission is a little bit notchy, a little bit uh, clunky feeling. And it has really strong competition, but I don't hesitate to recommend the G310R. This is a lot of motorcycle for the money. And uh, even as a more experienced rider, I have a ton of fun riding this thing. So I highly recommend you check it out. BMW dealerships typically, from my experience, are pretty good offering test rides and things like that. So check one out. Anyway, I hope this review has been useful and informative. If it was, please consider supporting independent journalism here at Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that down below in the pinned comment and in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Please ride safe and I'll see you out there.